What if consciousness was an illusion? I'm Pats, this is the Not A Vlog series, and it is an extension of my older Rants, Monologues, and Speeches RMS series. My working theory that, not my working theory, my general theory that I've been working on for five years is the people are ideas theory. It's an idea that people are conceptual things that exist in the theoretical plane, yada yada yada. Um, it gets complicated. It evolved into my idea that people are made up of two parts personality cores and memory layers and that leads to a person um, and if you're missing one or the other you're either a monster or a ghost that's another rant I'll do in a bit um, all these theoretical tests about trying to find out what we are so that if we wanted to achieve immortality like I want to how do you do that without killing yourself because if you don't have a full understanding of what the consciousness is and what people are you could create some kind of horrid creation, or you could just be killing yourself and replacing yourself with a clone that is not you. So, <laughs> one of the hardest things with trying to become immortal is dealing with the idea that if you want to upload yourself into an artificial intelligence program, there's a leap of faith you have to cross, there's a jump. And to get over that jump, you have to say, I will still be me on the other side. And there's no way to tell if that will actually happen. If you do it and, you know, how will you know if you're still you? And that's, you know, the whole fear behind it. That's the whole fear behind teleporting is, will you still be you? There's a huge collective fear of death. Uh, I have made another rant called Dying is Not Death, in where we die constantly. We are constantly in a state of dying. And I'm not saying that we're constantly in a state of decay, like old philosophers have said. I'm saying that we do not experience death, but we experience dying all the time. You cannot experience either of these things. You can have a near-death experience. You can die medically and then be brought back and feel your body shutting down and things, but the concept of death mentally you literally can't feel it because you can't remember the feeling of not being able to remember. It doesn't work. It's just a theory. Death itself, even though we know it happens, is, is it's like, you know, until we find the general theory of gravitri gravitrons and gravity, gravity's still a theory even though we know it, what it is. I feel that way with death. It's still a theory because can't really send someone into the black hole that is death and be like, yeah, death is this, because it'll be like, oh, you know, the white light is this chemical and yada yada yada. Conscious death and the termination of your stream of consciousness, people worry about it. But as we go along the five years of my research into this topic and my theories with it, I got to a point where I said that we are constantly dying in the fact that if a person is a personality core and memory layers around them, then every time you get a new memory, you're a different person. I worked this out with my classic experiment. Think of a red triangle. Now think of a green square. Now think of yourself thinking of the red triangle. Now, if I were to tell you to think about you thinking about the green square, there would be a point where you would forget about remembering the you that was thinking about the red triangle. And at a certain point, Everyone would forget that you had once been thinking about a red triangle and the you that you were remembering would be dead because they would be forgotten. And that you was you a few moments ago. Moments. Moment, 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 moment. Every time you get a new moment, every time you get a new memory, you're a different person. And every time you forget the person that you were, you die. Every time you go to bed, you wake up, different person, dead. And the stream of consciousness. But you don't really, because you don't feel like you've died. It's preposterous. So what is it? Well, this takes me back to my Red vs. Blue video. You know, it, this all goes in a line. It, I'm gonna, once I find a good bookend to it, I can magically make a book and post some kind of thesis about this. But for now, it's cumulative. 
Picnic Cumulative and my other video, I talked about collective consciousnesses and how we may all just be collective consciousnesses of all of ourselves working towards similar goals over several iterations, over infinite iterations, because we're constantly dying. Every, t every time we do something, the we that planned on doing it is no more, is merely another iteration in the m infinite iterations of you. So what does that make us? We are the us that exists after the teleport. We are the ex us that exist after the transfer into an AI unit. So why do we fear that gap if we go through that jump all the time? And if that is truly the case, what is it that we're fearing, and how do I say this? Uh, is life as we know it even as we know it? Is life and is consciousness an illusion? And this has been thought of before, of course, you know, it's hard to have a new idea in philosophy, but I'm having an optimistic twist on this, and how can you be optimistic about saying that we are not actually alive and everything is just an illusion. Well, I mean, we all know about illusions, you know? We know about simulations and things, and we know that if you've been following me, then you know that every reality is real for itself. You know, there is no such thing as something that is fake. Every theoretical reality that you think up is real for that reality. So saying that something isn't real or is an illusion doesn't mean too much to me. And it makes me think about the illusion of death as well. Life and death are both illusions, and the only thing that we know of is what we experience collectively. We are all collective consciousnesses, and we really, like, what's saying that if you died a hundred years ago, and, you know, if you've seen her, you can know what I'm referencing, what happens if you die a hundred years ago, and then a bunch of pe really smart, quick-moving people piece together all of your remains of what you've left in this world and create a personality construct that says that they're you. For all intents and purposes, that's you. That, that really is you. I mean, there are some, you know, monstrous things you can do with this that would go against this or warp the idea that I'm trying to say, but disregarding that, disregarding, you know, Leslie from South Park, which, why did they have to make her into an asshole? You know, for the pure recreations, not the Hollywood-style ones, they are you. That That is how it works. Because, really, like, if we, you know, where do you draw the line? If, if, if these memory layers get thicker and thicker, the more impactful the memory is, you know, when do you say that it's not you anymore? We can feel like different people all the time. But is there a point along this line that we say, okay, something integral has changed? Because we still always have our personality cores. If you warp a personality core, again, yeah, yeah, th that's going against this. But if you keep the personality core and you just keep changing their life, you know, where does the illusion become opaque and where does it become translucent? So if you have some horrible event happen in your life, like both your parents die and you turn into a brooding person and all this stuff, it's a very harsh, thick memory layer that severely changes how you do things in life. But compare that to you waking up in the morning after a trippy dream that makes you question whether or not you have a second family in Peru. What's the line there? What's the line between you're still the yous working together and you separate yourself from all the past yous. You really have, you as in you all of yous, of you single person, collectively over a stretch of time, really have to have the solidarity to work together. And this goes into a weird thing about motivation again of if you feel like you can't really get yourself each day to work towards the same goal if you're trying to be an artist and you're trying to do daily doodles. If you think about yourself as collective consciousnesses, then you can think about whipping yourself into shape in a different way of trying to get all of the yous to work together towards a common goal. 
so that even if something horrible happens in your life, you still have this one thing you've created, this one arbitrary point that you will always hold. And you know that if you stop upholding this arbitrary point, then you're not you anymore. And that's how I do it. I have some certain things I've set in place through logic so that I can never refute them logically. I can only amend them. And true, you can amend something to the point where it's not the original thing, but like, I have these empathy goals and these other things that are just these kind of codes that I put into my mind. I have put a lot of arbitrary barriers too, things I say, I don't think about this for various reasons, but one of them is, that's me. I've placed this there to know that if I go past this, something weird has happened. Your mind is like this. Your mind can, you can do all these things with your mind. And if you place these barriers, they're arbitrary and aren't infringing on your life, and these goals and these other things, and you don't change them too much, then that's, I guess that's what identity is. Because I have had an identity crisis for the past year. I don't identify as much of anything. But I feel like if you think of yourself as an infinite conglomeration of all these different yous working together, living and dying in flashes, each one not really realizing until you watch this video that you have just died, the illusion of life and the illusion of death doesn't have to be a sad thing. It can be a humbling thing. Because there have been people through all of history who realize that their life, they're going to die, and they're going to pass on, and they need to make the world better in their wake. You could have a mini version of that that's less depressing and less giving up on, on your own goals and just making it about your children and everything, and do it for yourself. You on Tuesday can be like, well, I'm not going to be here Wednesday. I'm not going to be here a second from now. Me thinking about me saying the first half of the sentence has already said that I've died and now I'm a new person, but generally speaking, <laughs> I'm not going to be here Wednesday. I'm going to wake up and I'm probably going to have some new ideas, but I'm going to write down the schedule and we're going to stick to it. We are going to stick to it just like I stuck with the guy yesterday. The guy tomorrow will stick with me and we will be us. Think of yourself as a bunch of little machines working together in this big uh, human thing, whatever the hell it is. And working together, you can accomplish some amazing things. Like achieving immortality. Just don't make too big of a leap of faith. You don't want to be dead. Being dead is not an illusion. But dying in life are. Stay optimistic, guys.